After 400 years of the Jewish people living in the land of Israel, which is the period of time from Joshua to Judges, a roller coaster ride of periods of oppression and occupation of foreign peoples and then salvation at the hands of the judges, the Jewish people tire of the situation. They go to the last of the judges, who's Samuel, the great prophet, and they ask for a king. Samuel decides that the first king of Israel will be Saul, Saul from the tribe of Benjamin. King Saul proves to be a great leader, but he has one fatal flaw, misplaced modesty. And while he unites and leads the Jewish people successfully as a political leader and a military commander, he fails in a key mission to destroy the ultimate enemy of the Jewish people, the Amalekites. And because of that, he's told by Samuel that God will tear the kingdom away from him. Samuel then goes to look for a placement for King Saul. He goes to the tribe of Judah, to the family of Jesse. Jesse has eight sons, all of whom are very impressive. The smallest and physically least impressive is little David, the redhead. When Samuel comes to visit Jesse, David's left out in the field with the goats while Samuel inspects the other brothers. After looking at all of them, he says, these guys are all amazing, but is there anyone else in the house? They bring in little David. Samuel sees him and anoints him with the anointing oil. The brothers are in shock. Him? And Samuel says, don't look at the exterior. People look at the external. God looks at the heart. Even after young David is anointed by Samuel, he doesn't become king till years later after Saul's death. But his first moment of fame comes when he, as a young boy, using only a slingshot, will kill the Philistine mercenary, Goliath. He then will go to work for King Saul as one of his generals and even marry one of Saul's daughters. But King Saul becomes very jealous of David, realizing that he is a threat to the future of him and his family as a potential king. David will have to flee from King Saul and even go into hiding. A few years later, King Saul is killed in battle fighting the Philistines. David at this time is living in the south of Israel, and the tribe of Judah will anoint him as their king. But seven and a half years after that happens, the entire Jewish people will come to David and say, please rule over all of us. Thus, King David will become the second king of Israel and one of the greatest leaders of the Jewish people. King David is the role model for leadership in the Jewish world. He has it all, the political skills, the military skills, the spiritual connection. He is a statesman, a prophet, a musician, a poet, one of the truly great leaders of Jewish people in all of Jewish history. King David says, now that we have a king from whom all future kings will come, and Jewish tradition teaches that the royal bloodline of the Jewish people is that house of David going all the way down to that last political leader of the King David's family in the future, the Messiah. He says, now we finally need a capital city. It will be King David who will send his general, Yoab ben Surya, to sneak into the city of Jerusalem which had remained a non-Jewish city in the heart of a Jewish country for 440 years. King David will capture the city, and he will build his capital over the Canaanite city of Jerusalem. He will bring the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. King David will even want to build the temple in Jerusalem. But God will tell him, it's not your job, David. It's for your descendants to do that. For 33 years, King David will rule the Jewish people a unified monarchy. He will subdue all the surrounding nations that threaten the Jewish people. When King David hits the age of 70, he passes away. But he passes the mantle of leadership to his son Solomon. And Solomon will inherit really the golden age of ancient Jewish history. Under Solomon's rule, there'll be 40 years of peace and prosperity in the land of Israel. And it will be King Solomon who will finally build the temple. With the completion of the temple, the Jewish people are now at the zenith of Jewish history. Strong leadership, unity, peace and prosperity. King Solomon is described in the Bible as being the wisest of all men. And all the nations of the world come to learn from King Solomon. He even marries many, many of the daughters of many of these kings to make political alliances with them, to speed up the whole process of spreading the knowledge of God throughout the world. Unfortunately, after King Solomon's reign, he chooses his successor, one of his children, who is not up to the task, 
who can't stand in the footsteps of his father. After this, the northern tribes are upset with King Solomon's choice and they rebel. And the united monarchy splits into two kingdoms. The kingdom of Israel in the north that's comprised of ten tribes, and the southern kingdom, which is primarily the kingdom of Judah, with Jerusalem as its capital. Parallel to this, the great empires of Egypt and Mesopotamia have reemerged and now make a land grab on the Jewish state. And now what was this golden age is gone. Israel's divided monarchy with both the northern and southern kingdoms, vassal states of either the Assyrian or Egyptian empires. Slowly but surely, starting with the northern kingdom, idolatry will creep in, the kings will be corrupted, the kingship will fall not only morally but spiritually, but gradually be whittled away by foreign invaders. Eventually, the northern kingdom will be destroyed by the Assyrian Empire, and the remaining tribes in the north will be exiled, never to return. Until today, they're known as the Ten Lost Tribes, one of the great mysteries of Jewish history. 134 years after the destruction of that northern kingdom, the southern kingdom will also fall victim to the Babylonian Empire. The king Nebuchadnezzar will lay siege to Jerusalem for almost three years. And after three years of intense siege and famine and destruction, Jerusalem and the first temple will be destroyed and the Jewish people will be carried into exile. That's when the famous by the rivers of Babylon psalm was composed by the Jews going into exile. It's now been 850 years since Joshua first led the Jewish people into the land of Israel. 440 years of the period of the judges and a first temple period of 410 years. But it all comes crashing down and we now enter a dark period of Jewish history, the exile in Babylon. Jeremiah the prophet prophesied that the Jewish people would remain there for 70 years, and that is exactly what happens. I'm Ken Spiro, and you're watching JTV. To stay up to date with JTV content, click subscribe here if you're on YouTube and hit the alarm bell. And if you're on Facebook, hit the like button, and under following, click see first. If you enjoy watching JTV content and want to help us continue to grow, please consider making a donation to us by clicking here.